Yeah, welcome everyone to the manager's talks. Um, I'm very pleased to be here today with the president of my organization, uh, Lutka Ramme, um, who has Hello. been representing managers um, at German and European level for 25 years. And we're here to discuss today about the topic of um, LGBT um, IQ rights in Europe. Um, the European Parliament has just um, recently adopted a resolution uh, to declare the European Union um, LGBTIQ freedom zone. And um, in this interview today, we will talk about the experiences um, Ludger had uh, with regards to um, these rights and the role, of course, of managers um, in the workplace uh, to protect LGBTIQ um, rights. So I would start, uh, Ludger, by asking you, um, as a gay manager, how would you describe the, the changes in the working life um, that have um, yeah, touched LGBTIQ people um, over the last um, uh, 25 years? What are the main, uh, the main changes that you could, you could see in your, mm -hmm. um, uh, during this time? Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, Jean-Philippe, and hello, everybody. Um, I'm very pleased to be with you today. And of course, I'm, uh, I'm really keen on sharing my experiences. Um, well, 25 years doesn't feel like it, but it's quite a long time. It's a quarter of a century. And uh, the changes are tremendous. When I was a, was a young lawyer, um, I didn't really know any, anybody who was gay and who was out. Um, it was, uh, I lived in a, in a mid-sized city in Germany. Uh, I was brought up in a Catholic environment. Um, a lot of pressure, a lot of um, competition. And uh, so I, I, really, I really didn't have any um, possibility to, uh, to meet other gay managers. It was, was also quite obvious in, at that time that being a manager, you couldn't be gay. I mean, there was this exclusive... Uh, um, atmosphere in the in the in the world of of business that um, only the the tough and the strong people would be successful and the the idea that a gay person could have these qualities they were just not around and uh, what changed um, in this uh, in the course of the these years what what were in your opinion the triggers that made it more um the workplaces more gay friendly or was there a moment could you identify a moment where more and more managers um, said okay i want to be out i want to to be open yeah well the change didn't happen in the in the business world that's for sure the change happened more in the arts sector in in movies films um um, painters, um, we have we have had in the in the 80s and 90s, we have had uh, Andy Warhol, uh, people who lived in in uh, places where there was more going on on in the gay scene. So from there, this movement, the Christopher Street movement in the United States. So I think that shifted uh, the the conditions, and luckily uh, the change came from there drop by drop into other fields and and finally some political parties in germany like the greens or the liberals uh, they adopted this this wish to have um, equal rights and equal opportunities for gay people in in all the possible possible professions and and then i think also the the equal opportunities movement in from the united states um, shifted over to Europe. And luckily that went step by step by step um, on and over the years, I think the situation improved. Yeah, it, it, and uh, now I would like to ask you a little bit more about your experience. How was it uh, in this time when you came out at work? I mean, I can just speak for myself as a young queer employee. So to say for me, it, it was not a challenge. So for me, it's also more difficult to understand how it must have been um, back in the days, but still today, of course, in countries like uh, in Poland, where they declared LGBT free zones, um, for example. So, um, so I guess uh, it, it depends, of course, also from where we're speaking. Mm -hmm. So could you, could you tell me a little bit how it was for you um, when you uh, came out at work? Mm. 
Well, I didn't come out so so long ago. Actually, um, I spent most of my professional life uh, in the closet because the situation was like this. Uh, because uh, I wasn't able to to see a way for me to be out at the same time uh, as um, as having some some success. Um, I was brought up with this idea. Um, if you want to be successful, you have to be streamlined. You have to be the same like 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 the role models, the heteronormative role models that were that were put forward. And um, I just simply couldn't imagine that uh, that I could be a successful manager and at the same time live my life to the outside. And I I have to admit, and I, I'm willing to share this with you and with the audience. Um, I'm a minority within a minority because I started my sexual identity defining myself more like a bisexual person. I had, when I was young, I had experiences with men and with women. And for a, quite a while, I wasn't really sure on which side do I belong. And I'm sure that many gay people at that time had the same kind of feeling. Where am I? Which side do I belong to? Because I'm not really sure. And uh, so, so what happened to me? I mean, I, um, I, uh, when the, there was the time of the of the AIDS uh, virus, um, uh, and so many people dying from it, I kind of made a decision. So I don't know where do I belong, but apparently it's really dangerous to be gay, and apparently it's it, it's 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 life threatening. So I took the decision uh, to 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 go more to the to the heteronormative world and. Um, that was a mistake, I think, from today's perspective. But at that time, many people, I think, made this choice. And um, so I got married. I have three children. And uh, that was a very successful partnership. And um, I wouldn't like to miss this part of my life. But when I was in my 40s and the children uh, grew up more and more, I felt this sudden shift in my identity and I really had this conviction, um, well, actually a part of me is missing and I, I use a lot of energy to suppress my, my, gay, my gay side. And I said, this can't go on like that. I have to go out. I, it, is, it is not that, uh, that the way I imagined that I could um, kind of suppress something of my, my, my nature. So I said, uh, in order to stay healthy, I, I did really say, I go out now. I did this with my family, with my friends. It was a big surprise to everybody, but I now feel so happy that I will, had the guts at that time to do this. And, um, and I would always recommend it to everybody, um, be what you are and, and live your life and don't try to please others but try to please yourself first and uh, this is the lesson that i learned in the hard way uh, and i can only share it with you uh, and as i hear from you jean philippe um, today it's so much easier and it's true it's, it has been so much easier once i did the decision myself it was so much easier because i had so much support thank you um, Ludger, for sharing this and um, you mentioned um, that uh, for you it was a big liberation to to go this step um, but today we can hear many many managers uh, say that uh, sexual orientation is not really um, their business and uh, it's not something they should uh, look uh, onto it's, it's it's a private issue uh, we hear very often well, yeah. what do you tell these these managers and employers well i i tell them that they are mistaken. It's a it's a huge mistake to think that um, uh, the sexual part of a person belongs just to to the privacy. Um, we are all personalities. We are human beings, and a part of us is the sex. And it is not that you can kind of take off that sex when you enter a company. You're always the person that you are, and if you have to to hide what you are, you take a lot of energy, uh, you, you cannot develop your creative thoughts when you always are with your thoughts somewhere else, uh, thinking, maybe fearing to be discovered. So uh, I would say in the interest of the company, you have to let people be what they are also at the workplace. And um, 
I can still today feel this this liberation that I had when I spoke to my board of directors in my my in my job. I told them, listen, I'm gay, and they they reacted very understanding, and um, I felt this great relief to say wow, I can be who I am, uh, even at the workplace. And that gave me a lot of energy and a lot of uh, good vibrations, I would say. I would be curious to know um, what are the building blocks to make a workplace more LGBTIQ inclusive? So it's a, uh, it's a very good question. Um, first of all, I would recommend any organization uh, to actively promote LGBTQI rights and uh, actively promote, promote the fact that it's okay to be with this at the workplace. Um, it is so difficult to come out uh, even today if you don't know the position of your company to this question. And it, it takes a lot of stress from people uh, if they have a good understanding, how will my company react if I finally decide to come out? So this is the first point. The next point is that, um, let's face it, although times are better now, but there are still homophobic people in our society. And they are also at the workplace. And I would, as a manager, as, as, as the boss maybe, uh, I would take care that there are no there's no place for homophobic behavior at the workplace. Yes, and the next point, because homophobic behavior is a sort of discrimination that opens the way for other sort of discriminations to racist ideas, um, to bullying, uh, to mobbing. And, and so um, that is my real task as a manager, I have to to really make a zero tolerance policy in my company to cut out all these very, very harmful um, behaviors. And uh, I want my company to be a safe place for all varieties and all uh, diversity behavior. A little bit um, the challenges that uh, managers face or also the fears um, mm -hmm. that uh, managers may have when coming out. Um, and even if you mentioned there's this kind of liberation, but what would you give uh, uh, as an advice to managers, to um, uh, LGBTIQ managers who would like to come out but fear the consequences because mm -hmm. maybe their working environment is not very tolerant, not very inclusive? Well, frankly, uh, the truth is that there are always a handful of people who are voicing doubts whether you or me, whether a, gem, a manager can be successful um, when he is gay or when she is gay. Um, um, and we have to live with this. Uh, I, I think um, we, have, we have also rights for the people who have doubts and who are critical and they, they are there. And, and so, so how can you react with these people? Um, I would say, the, the, the point is that in our times, those managers who are strong, who are tough, who are really doing the old style of management, they are dying out. And you can prove this. Um, if we look now to, to this, all these changes we have in the um, pandemic, um, the corona, pandemic, we can see that the new leadership is more empathetic. It's more, it's more listening to the needs of, of the people you work with. It's more determined, not from a top-down approach, but it's more determined by, by listening to the needs of the people you work with and also to give them the support to be the best version of themselves. Uh, and that is asking for people who have a sensitivity for problems, for, for human nature, for possibilities of awakening creativity, of awakening best performance. So you, you are more a coach and you are not a controller anymore. So the world of management is adapting to the new world and to the new 
um, developments. So I'm very, very confident. And this is what I tell all my LGBTQI friends out there. Um, you are needed and your special skills are needed. And it is uh, your success, your path to success to give what you really have to offer. And I think um, LGBTQI people have a lot to offer, which distinguishes them maybe from straight people. And, and this is my answer, what, what I would do it and I'd do it with very big confidence. You mentioned we can offer, there are things that we can offer. Um, uh, do you have something in mind um, when you say that? Yes, I think it's this, um, this capacity uh, to, or to have a sensor, a, a much better sensor for questions of identity, for questions of um, determining what do I want in my life, what I'm here for, because we all have been forced to, um, to realize that we are a little bit different from all the rest. And, and we have been suffering from that also. We had to... To, to, to start thinking, um, well, I'm a little bit different, but why and what is the good of it? And I'm, I'm, I'm sure that this very early experiences in our life gave us some instruments into our hands that we can use also in our career. And Ludger, I would like to know, um, you have been elected one um, of the top 100 uh, out executive in Germany and uh, also on the European scene, um, mm. uh, you are probably uh, one of the more visible out executives. Um, I wanted to know how, um, what the role of um, like awards like this um, is and, um, uh, and I'm also thinking about uh, the role of diversity charters and maybe also there are um, networks among others also in ULA in the organization uh, that you come from um, that is mm -hmm. representing managers in Germany. So mm -hmm. um, what is the role of, yeah, of awards, of, of, of networks and, and uh, charters? Mm. Yeah, that's an interesting question. Um, and I, I have to say that I'm very proud to be on this list. Um, and it's, uh, I think I've been on this list twice and uh, I'm also um, running again on, on this year's competition to be on the list. Um, but I don't do that uh, to, to boost my own career because I'm, I mean, I'm turning 60 next year. So, uh, so for me, the career is achieved. But I do this um, and I'm proud to be on the list because I want to help um, providing role models for future manager generations. Um, I want to, to give a positive image of a gay manager and um, by that um, encourage other gay people just to, to do the same because there is no reason why they shouldn't do the same. Not at all. As I just explained, it's even the, the, the opposite. I think we have beautiful skills and we have to, to use these skills and we do, we give a lot of benefit to society. Um, and um, that's the main reason why, uh, why I think it's a good thing to have these lists, but also the diversity charters and everything. It's, it's the question of visibility. We have as a community. I, I, I mean, I, I include everything, like everything that's a little bit different and a little bit more colorful and more diverse into this uh, pluralistic, diverse society that we are luckily living here in Europe and uh, except for Poland. <laughs> but um, but I, I think it's, it's such a great um, achievement that we have to show it to, to our people that we live in, in societies with that we are happy and we are glad to have these rights of, of, of rights that everybody has. And it was not always like this. We have been suppressed. Um, we have been bullied. We have been mobbed. We have been killed even. Um, but that is over. And we have to make sure that it stays over. We have um, a constant responsibility to um, keep our rights visible and to say praise this achievement and let's not lose it and let's not not uh, play with it take it serious 
And this is the reason why it's so important to have networks, to have diversity charters, to give room um, to everybody uh, to express themselves. Speaking of um, visibility, um, CCUP Managers is also one of the six European social partners um, alongside uh, the main trade unions and, and the employer organizations. Um, in your view, how do you feel like um, social dialogue can also help um, to create more diversity or to, to uh, accelerate a kind of a, a process towards more diversity and inclusion? in yeah. the workplace, but also up to the to the European level where we are mm -hmm. um, working at. Yeah. Do you see there is a there's a bigger role to play here? Yes, uh, I think there is a room for improvement, but I would like to start with the with the fact that I have felt very welcome and very much accepted uh, in the in the union scene in and also with the social partners in general um, because I, I don't think it was um, I didn't make a big thing out of it but I think the news was spreading because I, I I'm I'm representing uh, an important organization on European level so I think that has been an issue but I never felt it and I felt very much welcome and I do think that in the social partners in general, there is a very welcoming, um, welcoming atmosphere to LGBTQI people. Um, that is that is a, a big achievement, which which I like very much. And then um, we have to see that in the social dialogue, um, there is a big exchange between the different European member states. And we have different levels of situations. Um, I would say in Germany, where I'm from, uh, we are very relaxed now with the, with the topic of being gay or not. That it's not a big deal. But in some other countries, more in the South and more in the, in the, the Catholic sort of um, South, like, like I, I think about Italy, for instance, um, there the situation is not yet as relaxed. And through this exchange, um, on European level in the social dialogue, the news are spreading that in some countries there's easy, it's easy going, uh, but in other countries not yet. And through this, this exchange, we, we might give positive examples to the countries that are not yet at ease so much with the topic. So that is a big advantage of the social dialogue to have this interchange, in, inter-exchange. The next point is that, um, what are we doing in the social dialogue? We are talking about our wishes to improve the working situation of the people and uh, to, uh, to, to create human undertakings, human companies. And there we are. Uh, this is where we have to, to look um, for points where um, this can be achieved through an, a social uh, dialogue um, where we can when there is a problem, like, like I come back to Poland, there is a, a government, for instance, that is pushing very hard against um, rights, equal rights and opportunities for, for gay and lesbians and, and other LGBTQI people. I, I think that the social dialogue at the workplace, I'm not talking about European social life, but social life at the workplace, the works council, um, the the contact with the employer, it is there where uh, where you can in a company regulate how do we um, how do we act with 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 people who are gay or lesbian? How do we integrate them? How do we make them feel welcome? That can be done there, and um, it 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 must be it must be in the company it must be in the sports uh, sector it must be in schools it's it, it it is necessary to talk about it in in the society on a communal level um, in in associations so everywhere where there is interaction between people uh, we have to address the topic and social dialogue is a perfect space uh, to do that. 
Thank you, Ludger. And um, now I would like to uh, wrap up um, what we have been discussing so far and coming back to the start um, of where we started with the resolution of the European Parliament um, mm -hmm. about the LGBT um, IQ um, freedom zone. Um, a last question, uh, maybe with regards to, to uh, this uh, freedom or also the, the role that uh, European integration plays. Um, how could we how could we do more to help also managers in countries like uh, like Poland uh, to be mm -hmm. well to support them in their freedom in other things you can think of mm -hmm. yes i can um, um, I, 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 um, i'm a member of uh, the german association of gay managers it's uh, it's by the way it's one of the member organizations of my um, umbrella organization ula where i'm the manager um, that is, it's, it's, it's really important to have these networks on national level and then uh, go on and look for peers in other countries. And uh, my German managers, gay managers association, we are, we are having contacts to, to Switzerland, to Austria, to Italy, not yet to Poland, because in Poland there doesn't exist anything um, yet. Um, but I, I believe... Um, that our doors are open uh, to welcome any Polish gay manager who would like to have uh, some point where he could turn to when he is bullied or when he has a problem or when he would like to speak about his difficulty to come out. And um, I know from my own experience, when I was able to voice my sexuality, which I couldn't do for a long time, it was such a relief. And it was such a great support for me uh, so that I can only uh, offer also from here, if anybody in Poland listens to this or sees me, and if he wants a contact, I can, I'm open to, to, to share my experience and maybe to support with some advice if I can. And, and that is what is necessary um, for all of us. Uh, we shouldn't just sit on our bums and think, oh, I have, I have a good situation. We have to think about those who have not a good situation or are in a miserable um, circumstances. And uh, for those for those, we have, to, we have to do this interview, actually. Thank you very much, Ludger. I think that's a beautiful closing work. So thank you very much for your time and um, I'm looking forward to our next discussion. <laughs> I enjoyed talking to you, Jean-Philippe. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everybody. Oh.